Outlaw Sports is brought to you by Molson Canadian, made from Canada, and Rocky Mountain Barbecue, Alberta barbecue cuisine at its best. Best comeback on the weekend. Patrick Reddy, uh, elbows. Uh, Chris Letang to the right. face. He's bleeding. He is. He's got a broken nose. Could you? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, watching the replays, I and, and I'm wondering it. why the why the uh, why the Montreal fans and the Mar Montreal Police Department didn't do something on Pat Pacioretty for <laughs> that hit. Yeah. But anyhow, the bottom line, he comes back and he scores the game-winning goal. James Neal backs in. What a magnificent move! And he scores the winning goal, and uh, they win that one in overtime. What a way well, for, to come back! For, first of all, let, so let's start from the goal. Shouldn't the whistle have been blown? Didn't you he, could argue didn't that? Didn't Carey Price have it? Uh, it was counting one, two, three, and the puck. But it comes looked out. like it came loose. Well, it looks like the player jabbed it with Maybe. his stick, and it came loose. So I didn't think they should have counted that. Was it a dirty hit? I couldn't tell by the uh, replays if it really was. It was a shoulder, and it got him on the nose, and a, a bleeding nose. I mean, and he came back, so he couldn't have been hurt. Uh, I well, guess he was he, hurt. He was bleeding, Grant. He had broken oh, nose. Oh, come on. I mean, that's not an injury. Well, that's what it was. A, it was a blind I guess what I'm hit. saying, I'm guessing I'm saying he hit. left the game by not being hurt. I mean, he wasn't concussed. He, he, didn't, he didn't leave the game for good. He came back out. I mean, a, a bleeding nose. I mean, yeah. Come on, Mike, you and I had that when we were working many years together, <laughs> you know, just getting PO'd at each other. Yeah, and pounding on Toth. So, uh, and finally, Grant, uh, the Canadian Junior National Team, uh, the World uh, Championships coming here in Edmonton uh, over the holidays, they announced uh, their players, only three returnees, but two members of the, the Flames uh, organization, Max Reinhardt and Michael Furland, have been named to the squad. Michael Furland, the big surprise there. Yeah. Not surprised Max Reinhardt is. Right good gift a young player they say might turn into a Damon Lanco type player down the road but Michael Furland some people have said he could be like a Milan Lucic kind yeah. of player a power forward he's big and strong kind of surprising that he was invited to this camp doesn't mean he's going to make this team nope. but that's good I mean it's good for the Flames that this yeah. guy is a power forward with the Brandon Wee Kings Flames could use that kind of guy like that yeah you can always use toughness uh, we'll take a short break Ian Busby comes in to talk football right after this Tired of going to Redneck Barbecues? Well, you better call Rocky Mountain Barbecue. Alberta barbecue cuisine at its best. Great tasting food, clean and efficient service. Check us out online or call Rocky Mountain Barbecue. Welcome back to the show. Ian Busby of The Sun joins us. Uh, one guy that was never one of my favorite guys was Joe Kapp. Uh, when he was under Murray Pezum in the BC Lions and they had Larry Kaharik, it was like the biggest pricks in town. That's what they were. And then this weekend, perhaps the most entertaining moment was when he went up to Angela Mosca and he's still pissed about a play that developed 48 years ago when he hit Willie Fleming, a uh, questionable call, tie cats win the game. But he went up and I think he was just joking to him and one thing led to another, and he punched him, and he kicked him after he get hit, got hit with the cane. <laughs> well, 70-year-old <70 laughs> guy. 70-year-old guys throwing canes and punches. Oh, it's just brilliant. Uh, where else would the, in the CFL would you see an alumni event turn into a brawl between two of the guys who were in the Grey Cup 48 years ago? Yep. Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't Joe Cap come back and win the Grey Cup the next year? Could have. Well then, then what's he still upset about? You know, uh, and uh, obviously when you stick a nose, a uh, uh, flower under the nose of Angela Mosca, I would expect a little bit of swing back at yeah. that point. He knew what he was doing. Yeah, uh, he was trying to push his buttons and. Uh, and he did. Obviously, it was the, t the chatter of the entire Grey Cup, and because <laughs> the, the the Grey Cup game itself wasn't that great of a uh, performance. Uh, entertainment wise this obviously became the, the one lasting impression that people are going to remember from this when they say 99th Grey Cup they're going to say yeah the one where Angela Mosca and Joe Cap had a fight at an alumni event when I'm 70 I'm coming back and I'm going to beat the shit out of Paul who will be 80 yeah <laughs> you, bet. you better hope he's, he's ready for it at that oh. point <laughs>